George, congratulations on being inducted into the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you. I have a few questions I want to ask you about your career, your background. All right. I'd like to start off by asking, what individuals have had the greatest influence on you and your wrestling career? I would have to say my high school wrestling coach, uh, Henry Campbell. This was in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, he uh, <clears throat> later on uh, left Phillipsburg and coached at uh, Yale, but uh, he was probably my greatest influence uh, and pushed hard and in those days it was expected that you would go out and win. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't have age group wrestling then and we didn't have uh, anything like um, taking second, third, fourth place in a tournament, uh, there wasn't that. There was no in-season tournaments or four ways or six ways. The tournaments came at the end of the season and they were uh, qualifiers for the state championship. If you won league, you go to the district. If you win district, you go to regional. If you win regional, you go to the state championships. Number two guy, three, four, all along the line, they went home. So th th this it was this kind of man that that instilled that idea that you have to win, and it's about winning. It's not like right. you get injured and you say that's okay because I'm going to slide in there on the end. Uh, right. Don't work that way. Who is or was your idol? Say again. Who is or was your idol? Well, I don't know that I had any idol. Um, it would, it would again have to be my high school wrestling coach, because the guy could, he could quote Shakespeare or Jimmy Durante. He was funny, serious. I was a minute late, curfew one night. I had to run the gauntlet the next day, and then after the gauntlet, since I still wasn't done. Uh, he took me out and ran me out through the forest, you know, on a road, and it got to be a funny thing. <laughs> we got in a snowball fight, <laughs> and he was he was an influence. He, Great. How did you get started in wrestling? Uh, <clears throat> I really didn't care much about the sport, but the little coal town in Pennsylvania that I came from, uh, everyone was a wrestling fan, all oh, maybe about 2,000 people. My older brother, unfortunately, he was interested in wrestling, and um, I, I I didn't really care about getting involved in it. But he got me involved in the thing simply because you know you you uh, you get a couple headlocks without the arm included, uh, the guillotine, the double overhead bar arm, uh, stretcher, body scissors, things like that that I could have gotten through life without ever having to know. Uh, my brother passed this on to me, so uh, by the time I got into high school I knew this plus some very good, actually swell, illegal holds. So, you know, that's that was a, another influence. What do you attribute your success in wrestling to? Uh, <laughs> having a lot of athletes that believed in what you were telling them and athletes that wanted to become number one. You have to have that. The coach can feel that, but unless he gets athletes that buy into that, well, then there isn't a whole lot of success. And, uh, and I, I was very fortunate to have that in the military, um, coaching there, uh, kids that had never wrestled before, but they just bought into the program. And the same thing with uh, high school wrestling, same thing. Is there one outstanding situation or memory that you have involving wrestling? Oh, uh, you mean like a uh, from uh, from wrestling or coaching or what the any aspect? Oh, well, you know, one one particular wrestling. thing. Yeah. Well, wrestling. In in general. I was a high school senior, and um, I had won everything up through to the state finals, and uh, 
back in those days, that was like a total of uh, uh, 19 and 1. I lost in the state finals by one point. And the guy I lost to, he went off to the university someplace. Uh, and, uh, and I was hoping that to get a scholarship at Penn State, but instead they... Uh, Charlie Spidell, the coach at the time, he recruited Joe Krufka, who was uh, later on that summer, the 1952 Olympian. Mm. Well, the match, that's just leading up to the thing. Our sophomore year, uh, Penn State was undefeated. They were the defending uh, national champions. Uh, we were the worthy contenders. And we were at Penn State. And it was, you know, nobody thought we were really going to win. But when we got up to the 167 pound class and won that one, we went ahead by three points. There was two weight guys left, me at heavyweight, or 177, and our heavyweight, who was a walk-on guy and a foregone conclusion he's going to lose. He's going to get pinned. So now the match is on the B, and I just have to win by a decision. But this guy, I wrestled him as a freshman at the Wilkes tournament and a double overtime match and got pinned for him. So it's kind of like that was a big deal. I, I had to win that thing because all these kids below me, they, they had gotten gotten us to the point where we could win it was up to me and we knew the heavyweight he was a walk-on inexperienced wrestler and we knew he'd get flattened and so there it was that was the big match and uh, I looked up there we had some crazy guys from my hometown and they were playing a kazoo and a cowbell or something whatever they announced me and I thought yeah all right and but then I start thinking hey you know uh, this is time to maybe really shine, and and God, I mean, it inspired me. I mean, just having a, you know a couple dozen people from my hometown there, and so I uh, I went out and I won seven to three, uh -huh. and we beat Penn State, and uh, well, that's that's the end of that story. Right. But it was it was something that was special because the Olympian had beaten me. And then I beat the Olympian, the same yeah. guy. I mean, and it went back and forth. All my career yeah. was with top wrestlers because it was all competition in tournaments. So. Terrific. Why did you decide to uh, become a, a, a coach or an official? Well, <laughs> I had won the All-Army Championship when over in Germany. And the commanding officer, he thought, well, this was great. Uh, 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 he said, uh, I would like you to start uh, a wrestling team. And uh, well, when your commanding officer of, of a large regiment tells you that, you, you don't say, well, I'll think about it. I mean, you do it. Well, I put out stuff for wrestlers, you know, with flyers. Nobody took them. Well, we had the border patrol on the east-west German border, and these guys were three weeks, you know, in, uh, out in a jeep, open jeep, cold winter. They were out. And whenever I realized that, I got word out to the guys that were on Border Patrol, and I got about, oh, maybe 15 to 18 Border Patrol guys come in, and all sizes, and that was the nucleus of uh, my wrestling team. And uh, none of them had ever wrestled before, but when you're spending two weeks out in the Jeep, then you get one week back in the barracks, then two more weeks out, and you go through the winter like that, uh, they were motivated to wrestle, <laughs> and I I worked the hell out of them. Uh, we ran between five and seven miles every day. Uh, it was uh, that sort of thing, two-day workouts, but that's all we did. We had no other d duty because uh, uh, the commanding officer, he says, uh, do it, you know, and well, that was neat when you, uh, when you have that kind of time, and uh, you, you, can, you can teach all kinds of good things, you wow. know. If you could start all over again, what would you do differently, either as a coach, official, or wrestler? I don't know that I would do anything any differently. Uh, I would probably try to get 
more of an age group program started sooner. When I uh, went to Upland to coach, I started an age group program, but you have to have someone to, to compete with. So it was sort of a summer program, and I phoned other coaches in the area and said, well, look, let's get this summer league going, and I might take four or five kids over to his place, and he'd have four or five kids that were about the same weight, and we would do that. And then eventually, the second year there, then I got us all involved into the uh, uh, Southern California Junior Wrestling Association, which is what it was. And I was, I was uh, one of the officers in the club. And then the following year, or year or two, we changed to the California Age Group Wrestling Association. And so my Black Watch Wrestling Club uh, was a part of that. Now I would, I would do that thing. The next time uh, around, if I went around another time, I would be sure to 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 really work hard on that. And I, I worked pretty hard on it. But doing the high school teaching in the day, then yeah. afternoon coaching, and then in the evening on that, and juggling that, it's difficult. So I would I would get some really good wrestlers to work that program with me. What would you like people to remember about you? Uh, I don't know. Probably, I would like them to remember that uh, that we we ran, you know, or that I, I try to run a very good program. I, I didn't want my kids to be show-offs. I didn't want my kids to ever take advantage of some other wrestler just to show his strength or skills. Just to go out and wrestle, and uh, that's what I try to instill in all my wrestlers. And one of my wrestlers, the former wrestlers, uh, that's going to be my presenter here today, uh, Russ Cozart, uh, he has all those things. He puts those qualities into his kids. And uh, when they came out here a couple years ago to wrestle in the uh, Upland uh, Invitational Tournament, you can just see that. It was the same. It was just like looking at my, my high school wrestlers. Mm -hmm. All over again. They're the same kids. They were kind of quiet, not mouthy, and that. And that's what I would I would want to, uh, because that that's something not just for me, but the whole sport. It, it makes it better for the sport. George, in ending, how did uh, how did wrestling contribute to your life? Well, starting out as an underdog. Uh, I would never have had the opportunity to go to college had it not been for wrestling. And wrestling was the means through which I, I earned a scholarship, a full uh, scholarship to the University of Pittsburgh. And uh, had I never done that, in the little coal town, I would have, I would have continued my weekend job at the Brickyard and probably got married and stayed there, and that would have been as far as I would have gotten. But uh, by being involved in the sport where there was an opportunity to go on to college afforded by that sport, then uh, that's, that's what helped me out uh, the most. And, uh, and, and that's probably one of the things that uh, my my uh, presenter tonight it was the same thing. Uh, he got the whole way up to the CIF finals and took a second in it, just like I had done in the state championship. And uh, at the end of that thing, there was an opportunity for a full scholarship into the University of Alabama. And that's where he went, and when he got finished, I said, you come back here and, and you're going to be my assistant. But 15 minutes before his interview, I turned in my resignation. So there was nobody else to hire, so they hired him. <laughs> Pretty good. Well, George, congratulations again on your induction. Well deserved. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.